All right, welcome to Google I.O. in Mountain View, California. My name is Alex Doby. I'm joined by Russell Holly. Hey. Russell, Google I.O., how about that, huh? Uh, it's, been a, it's been a good week. Yeah, there's been <laughs> it's a been lot a, of fun a stuff. Crazy, a crazy couple of days with a ton of announcements and really uh, a continuation of last year in terms of all the major themes and like AI and what's going on with Android and just so many things. I don't want to waste a second. Let's just jump into it, starting with uh, the big keynote yesterday. Yeah, so you know, I'm, I'm actually going to dive in uh, really into the middle of the keynote. My, my favorite first thing that we saw was maps. You know, the, this was uh, one of the areas that didn't have like machine learning ad aid or, or assistant added or anything like that last mm -hmm. year, and it kind of surprised a lot of people because maps is such a big product. And we, we got that. We got you know, not only is uh, assistant being baked in for, for voice controls, but we got a really neat sneak peek at uh, walking directions in, in this kind of unique. Uh, like AR kit way that, that's tapping in the, the Google Visual Positioning System and, and mm. just a lot Which of... Which we saw from, it's kind of a legacy of Project Tango, right? That whole yeah, uh, yeah, this visual is, positioning system. This is like a, a lot of different ideas coming together into Maps to, to improve it in a bunch of really incredible ways. Cool, yeah, and actually uh, sort of the theme of at least the first 20, 15 minutes of the keynote was things that you know, Google products being enhanced by AI. We saw um, Google being able to use AI to handle composition of emails based on your relationship with the person, the context of the message, that kind of thing. Yeah, grabbing a lot of information that seemed deeply personal. You know, the, the <laughs> reference was kind of silly in that it was tacos, yeah. but it was, it was you know, this was a lot of information that was being pulled from your the way that you speak. I mean, AI's been part of Google Photos for a long time now with Google Assistant. It's interesting new features in terms of colorizing all the photos. Assistant looks at what is going on in the picture and colorizes it based on understanding of what's actually there. Um, we also had document scanning, which isn't exactly new in the world of smartphones and um, you know rec recognition, but interesting to see that too. We also got to look at a, a sharing mechanism where it's automatically grouping people into photos and saying, "Hey, you, you know, you know this person. Let's uh, let's share these photos that you've taken with this person with the you know with that individual." And actually, you can imagine a number of situations in which that could go horribly wrong. It, yes. A lot. <laughs> uh, so Google Assistant is at the heart of all these technologies, and we saw a lot of new stuff around um, entirely virtualized voices, making them sound more human than ever. Um, but I think six new Google Assist Assistant voices as well as uh, John Legend as your Google John Legend. John Legend is the only, like, uh, that it was It was actually kind of funny because we got John Legend as this thing at the end as a voice in certain contexts. So not like a mm. voice that you could choose all the time, but every once in a while something could happen where John Legend will be the one that responds to you in Google <laughs> Assistant, which, which, uh, which is I mean, funny. A little, little bit freaky, a little bit funny, um, but it's, you know, uh, actually interesting to get a background of what went into the original Google Assistant, who was just a person in a sound booth, and Google had to then clip together all these different um, voice samples into something that sounded like a continuous speech, regardless of what was actually being said. And now we're dealing with entirely digitized voices, and uh, you know the only way you can do that is with AI, and that's where Google's strength in that area comes in. That was a really fascinating detail: is that of the six voices that are that are coming to Assistant, none of them required a human being to power them like the original Assistant voice, which is incredible. So other Assistant stuff coming: Google Smart Displays are finally here, or will finally be here in July. We finally got a release date for that, um, which we first saw at CES. Uh, very, you know, New devices from Lenovo, so nothing entirely new there on, on the hardware side. Uh, YouTube TV coming to assistant displays, which I think is a big deal. Yeah, it's, it's all tied into you know being able to use your voice, but getting that visual assist to go with it. There was also a, a huge recipe section mm -hmm. where you can call for recipes and, and not only see the text of the recipe on the, the display, but also you know short video clips from a bunch of different partners. And let's not forget the assistant experience on phones, right? Because that is a huge part of things as well. Google kind of announced this last year with... Um, actions. Actions on Google. Uh, it was sort of re-announced this year with all the partners, including Starbucks, um, using your history with Starbucks, including your preferred drink and where you want to pick it up from uh, to give you more personalized experience when you're ordering coffee on your phone. Uh, more interestingly, and you know, one of the more controversial announcements of the show, is something called Project Duplex, which is the reverse of what you think of when you, you generally think of assistant, which is you talking to your assistant. This is your assistant making phone calls on your behalf to other humans. Right, and and, and it's really sounding, cool and kind of terrifying. Sounding like a human. The, yeah. the, the demonstration like was fascinating. Ums and ahs and all these imperfections that you get in normal speech that you don't normally get with digitized speech. But it's in, like it, this is not a product yet. This was this was Google saying this is a cool thing that we're that we're thinking about. You know, with with the different technologies that we have. But the demonstration was this virtualized assistant calling. And the people on the other end of the phone not knowing that they were not talking to a human being. Yeah, and actually, the first demo that we saw of this was a perfect interaction. Everything went smoothly. The second was when you know things went a little bit wrong, and the assistant was still able to 
keep in mind what was being said and you know sort of correct things and you know eventually have a successful outcome. I appreciated the time taken to show that there was something going wrong there because the whole time the perfect demo was going on, in the back of my mind I'm thinking, I know what my Google Voice transcripts look like. <laughs> yeah. So, so I know that the, the early days of this are not going to be great. There's a lot of questions that need to be answered there over time as this becomes a product, you know, especially the, the concept of consent, you know, making sure that the person on Absolutely. the other end is aware that they're talking to a robot and not talking to a human. But yeah, the, this is not a product yet. This is something that, that Google is working on and, and I'm sure that as this conversation evolves, we're gonna see more about those kind of ethical questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So another big theme of IO this year was something called digital well-being. Um, and part of that was you know, around managing screen time with your kids. Other part was just being smarter about the way you use devices. First thing was quite interesting, and again, based around assistance, it's called Pretty Please. And for anyone with kids, I think that's gonna be a huge deal in the way you they interact with these robots that are suddenly taking over our homes. Yeah, this is great because it's more than just you know a, a demand of a of a robot to give you an answer. It's this is the whole point is for for your interactions with Google Assistant and and Google Home as a as a you know kind of abstract extension of that to be a natural human conversation. So you want things like polite responses to be a part of it. So that's something for your kids for your own use of apps, including YouTube and actually including Android and Android P in general. Uh, Google's making it easier to be smarter and keep track of the way you use devices and manage your screen time in a way that is healthier, basically. That you have a new overview section in Android P that lets you see how you're using your phone. Uh, and you know, ultimately, the goal is to help you have more meaningful interactions with your phone so you're not just scrolling through random garbage on social media. And hopefully, this actually helps you ultimately lead a healthier life. I think my favorite part of that is being able to create limits within individual applications. You can say, I'm only going to use Twitter for one hour a day, mm -hmm. and you get a little warning that says you've got about 10 minutes left uh, of, of the hour that you've allotted yourself, and then when it's done, the icon grays itself out, and you just can't open the app uh, until your, your next cycle starts, unless you decide to overwrite it. And there are a few features in Do Not Disturb mode as well, where it can uh, hide notifications after a certain time and just say, okay, I'm hiding notifications now to stop you being distracted. Uh, new feature in Android P as well, where it will gradually gray the screen to grayscale as you approach your bedtime. I think iOS has something similar, um, but it's just designed to make it less attractive to you to pick up your phone uh, for just one more sort of five minutes. My phone sucks, I guess I'll go to bed. <laughs> exactly, my phone's black and white now. So Android P in general, um, I think it's safe to say the biggest new feature that we saw here at IO was the new gesture-based interaction model, uh, something that's been rumored for a long time, and we finally got our first look at it. And it, depending on who you believe, it is either the best thing ever or the worst thing ever. I'm more of the opinion that it's somewhere in the middle, but uh, so it's how does It's very this work? early days. I, yeah. I, you have been affectionately referring to this new navigation thing at the bottom as the pill, yeah. uh, where you can just kind of swipe up and, and move around through the interface without having these three individual buttons, which takes some getting used to. You know, the, uh, a lot I mean, of people who've been using it. seven years at this point since Ice Cream Sandwich. It, right. You know, there's a lot of muscle memory there. Yeah, so you know, you're gonna be you're gonna be tapping these buttons, and it's still not quite done. You know, we still have a back button in a lot of apps that looks like the legacy, we're calling it now legacy button, but it's, I really enjoy the kind of fluid motion that comes with this. Because a lot, you know, part of this, along with the Android P, is a ton of really elegant animations, mm -hmm. and that plays really well into this gesture control system, where you are very fluidly moving from app to app, and it just feels nice to do so. And that's not Android P, uh, so we're expecting to see the developer preview on uh, Google uh, Pixel phones and devices. Um, we got way more time, than that. We got way more than that, including one device, the OnePlus 6, that hasn't even been announced yet, is on board with this, uh, this pre-release version. And we saw it today on the Xiaomi uh, Mi Mix 2S. Um, super interesting to see, and this won't be reflective of the final experience when that phone is updated to Android P with uh, MIUI and all the rest of that stuff on top of it. But in the meantime, it just kind of demonstrates the power of uh, Project Treble in uh, helping Google and OEMs to update phones more quickly, update the underlying Android code without the necessarily all the UI and stuff on top of it. And um, it's a big deal for the few phones that have this developer preview now. It hopefully will be a much bigger deal when it comes time to update devices that are already out there that shipped on Oreo to Android P. And, and talking to Xiaomi about this as we were playing with that phone, it, one of the things that they said was that this, they felt very confident that this was going to make just the upgrade process in general much faster, which is an exciting thing to hear from the manufacturers and not just from Google. So Google Lens, it's been a year since it was first announced here at IO 2017. Um, we saw a lot of features at that demo that uh, you know, were a little bit rough to start off with when they eventually arrived on Pixel phones. We had a bunch more stuff announced this year, which hopefully in the next generation of Google phones should, um, and actually phones like the LG G7 as well, because it is being built in to the camera app in these phones. Um, 
you know, a, a lot more features there to get excited about. Yeah, that's the big thing is having it built into the camera so that it's, you know, it's either always running in the background or it's doing very specific tasks when you do things like pointed at text or, uh, you know, particular images that you want to see more information on. The, the kind of passive experience that we have right now with Lens, you have to be in Google Photos in order to use it. So having this kind of active experience is going to just improve, you know, exponentially. So Google talks about a couple of things. The first was copy and pasting text from the real world, which is, is a very elegant way of saying, OK, it's optical character recognition. But you can pick out text from, say, a sign, immediately copy and paste it. It's it there in the digital world on your phone. And you can just share it with any other app, which is similar to what we're seeing in the new overview menu for the task switching in Android P as well, where you can just grab text from any app in this new view, uh, even text that you otherwise wouldn't be able to grab, for example, in a web page or a label or button or whatever and then you can just share it with anything else on your phone. It's cool to think about all text everywhere as this kind of ephemeral thing that you can interact with. So I was about a lot more than the keynote, and you've attended a few cool sessions over the past couple of days. Uh, any highlights for you, Russell? The biggest thing that we got from the individual sessions that wasn't a part of the keynote was actually AR Core. Uh, AR Core has been updated to version 1.2, and the biggest feature that came from that is uh, cloud anchors, making it so that people can actually share AR experiences with each other. So not a whole load of new information on Wear OS. We did get the new name for that a couple of months back. So, um, But we do know that we have new CPUs coming from Qualcomm now that was announced here, which is a big part of just moving that platform forward. And we'll have it tied new watches to, that are actually new. <laughs> that maybe aren't an inch thick off your that's wrist right. not running a CPU that's, that's several years old. So that should, you know, if, you, if you're a fan of smartwatches, it's a, it's a tough time right now. And hopefully, uh, we don't know any details of where you know this is going on the software side, but. Hopefully, we'll have something new to see with Android P and with this new CPU and with new watch designs later in the year. For me personally, though, I think the highlight has to be Android P with this, this new navigation method. The promise you know, that Google is kind of hinting at with um, pushing uh, the pre-release version to uh, non-pixel devices that you know, maybe, hopefully, is a small step towards fixing some of Android's update problems. So um, that is going to wrap it up, I think, for a very quick sort of recap of Google I.O. As you probably can hear, uh, the concert is about to get started behind us, so it should be a fun night here in Mountain View. But until next time, thanks for watching from uh, Google I.O. 2018. We'll see you next time.